What's up, gearheads? Welcome back to Hammerhead Gearhead. It's a welcome back for me as well because I took a month long break, as some of you might know, from Instagram and YouTube. So it's been tough, I would have to say, for me, crushing actually because of the lockdown and quarantine. I haven't been able to travel, but you know, I'm back and I'm hungrier than ever. So if you haven't seen my last two episodes, which are on what's in my camera bag 2020, check them out here. This is the second part. This is the what's in my theoretical travel bag. The first being what's in my commuter camera carry. So I filmed them back in, well, a month ago and I just released them the last two Fridays. So check them out, they're awesome. Today, we're doing something very different. This is a retrospective review on the Nikkor 8-15mm fisheye. Retrospective because this was released, I believe three to four years ago. I'm not exactly sure, but around that time. And this has been the cornerstone of my underwater photography work. So I want to share with you what I love about this and what makes this a stellar lens, especially for those of you who are underwater photographers too. So, so much to unpack here. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and then let's get started. Okay, context. Why do we use fisheye lenses for wide-angle underwater photography as opposed to, say, rectilinear lenses? Well, there is something unique to underwater photography that is not found on topside photography, and that is what you call the water column. Water column is essentially water that is between your lens and your subject. So the further away you are from your subject, the murkier the image is, the more bluish. So you'll notice that if you have been filming or taking photos using your GoPro. So if you are closer to your subject, the fidelity and the quality of the image photo is much higher. But remember, we're taking photos of subjects that are probably this big and even bigger, like whale sharks. So the moment you get really close, you need that wide angle field of view to capture the subject and the background itself. So this is why fish eye lenses are essential to wide angle underwater photography. We even call it close focus wide angle. Another thing to factor is that we use strobes underwater. So light doesn't travel that far. So there is only a maximum distance that we have to be from our subject so that we can use our strobes efficiently and effectively. So having a wider angle or wider field of view is crucial, if not essential, to shooting with strobes. As for the barrel distortion, it's not really a problem because there are no straight lines underwater and it's all natural, mostly. For the most part, it's all natural. So some photographers like myself actually prefer that kind of distortion on their images. So this is why the 8 to 15 or at least the 15 mm focal length for a fisheye is the perfect one for me. When I first started out as an underwater photographer five years ago, I was using the Sigma 15mm fisheye. So it was a great lens, but I wasn't 100% set and satisfied with it. But why did I choose it? Well, at that time, there were only four lenses, four fisheye lenses available to us underwater photographers. So first for FX or full frame, there was the legendary 16mm fisheye from Nikon and you have the 15mm from Sigma. Then for DX or cropped, you have the 10 to 17 from Tokina and then the 10.5 mm from Nikkor. So those are the only four lenses. So since I was using a D800, I was choosing between 16 and the 15. So I had to use the 15 mm because of its close focusing distance. So remember underwater, the closer you are to the subject, the better. The legendary 16 mm was great, but it had a very long or far close focusing distance and the Sigma 15 could focus really close. The problem is that first, it had a greenish tint, and second, the lens hood, well, not this one, this is perfect, the lens hood was fixed, so it couldn't fit into our smaller fisheye dome, so we had to cut it out using a Dremel, so that was nerve-wracking, actually. But, you know, it was still a great lens. If you check out the photos right now that I'm showing, it's great. Uh, I've used it for sharks, I've used it for turtles, I've used it for reef scenic, so it's an amazing lens. But, you know, it was, again, not 100% all there. And then, this baby arrived. I remember that. That was 2017. This was announced. I was using a Sony A7R2 back then. I had a temporary switch to mirrorless with another brand. And when I saw this announced, I was so excited. And I told myself, if I'm going back to Nikkor or a DSLR, then I'm getting this lens. So a year later, 2018, I got the D850 and I got this along with it. 
and I have been impressed ever since. So I've been using it with the D850, uh, with the D500, and now using an FTZ adapter with my Z6 and Z7. As for the build, the lens has solid metal interiors and mostly plastic exteriors to reduce the weight. But don't worry, it doesn't take away from how robust this lens is. It also has good balance, good ergonomics, and at 480 grams, it's very, very light. So that's impressive. But what I love the most about this lens is that you can not only remove the lens cap, but also remove the lens hood completely. So this is mainly because at 8mm, it's circular, you see everything. So you would see this in the frame. But for us underwater photographers, this is great because that means that I could fit this fish eye lens in any of my fish eye domes. All right, so I've attached the lens to my Nikon Z7 using an FTZ adapter. So this is normally my working combo and I've added an Atomos Ninja Star so you can see my EVF as I go through the features. First is the focal length. So this is the lens at 15 millimeters and this is the lens at eight millimeters zoomed out. So you can see at eight, it's already a circular fish eye, but it still focuses really close. There you have it. So that blue ring that you see around the image, that's perfectly normal. As for the aperture, right now it's 3.5. And then when you zoom in at 15, it's at 4.5. So is this a problem? Is variable max aperture a problem? For me, no, because when I'm shooting underwater, I'm normally at f8 and higher. But this can go as high or as narrow as f22 or f29. The lens focuses internally and features an electronic diaphragm for silent operation. It also has extra low dispersion glass for reduced secondary chromatic aberration. Another welcome feature is the nano crystal coat or anti-reflection coating. This is great because we normally use fish eye lenses behind glass domes. The lens also does not have VR, which is not a problem because we normally shoot wide with fast shutter speeds and very, very small apertures. And underwater, that really isn't much of a problem. And lastly, you can add gelatin filters in the rear filter slot. Now let's get to my favorite part, which is the image quality. And I have to say, the images that you can get with this lens are absolutely stunning. This has got to be the best fish eye lens ever made, and I'm not exaggerating. It also has to be the sharpest fish eye ever. I mean, look at that. It's sharp from edge to edge. There is also no ghosting, even when you're shooting directly into the sun. So this is great news for us underwater photographers because we normally frame our subjects with the surface behind it. So normally pointing up and into the sun. The lens is also impressive when it comes to color. As you can see here in the side-by-side -side on the left, straight out of camera but with white balance corrected, and on the right after a few tweaks in Lightroom. As you can see, the colors are very vivid and very rich. There are no color fringes as far as I can see as well. Focusing is where this lens really shines and I've been boasting about it ever since the start of this video, so let me demonstrate. So that is impressive. It really fills the frame. And you can see here, it also focuses really fast. There, so here, desk, back here, laptop, and then there you go, and back here. So that is impressive, especially since this is wildlife photography and you have subjects zooming in or zooming out and you can keep up with this lens. You really can't ask for more. And yet another wonderful thing about this lens is that it's like having four fish eye lenses in one. So you can use this with both FX or full frame or DX, which is crop frame. So it's 8 to 15 when it comes to FX, but you notice here in the middle between 10 and 12, there's a notch. So that is the reference for 11 mm for DX or crop frame, which is equivalent to 15 millimeters on a full frame. So you can use that with a DUA50, which I have, and then a D500 as well. And when you use an FTZ adapter, you can also use it with your Z mirrorless system as you've seen me do earlier. So Z6, Z5, Z7, Z50 DX, and then probably in the future, Z72, Z62 as well. 
You can also use this 8 to 15 fish eye with this Kenko 1.4x teleconverter. So I normally have this combination when shooting sharks. So when you're shooting fish eye and the subject gets really close, normally when it comes to sharks, they tend to have that bubble head effect. The, the head is enlarged. So I use this to normalize that out. Of course, from 15 mm, I'm probably at 21 or 22 mm, but it evens out the proportions of the sharks and they look much better. As opposed to just doing, let's say, just a fish eye where the, the head is bigger or a rectilinear lens wherein the sharks become more sinuous and they're very, very thin and emaciated, so I don't like that. So this is my perfect combination for shooting sharks. So I hope I was able to convince you on why this is such a stellar lens that is on a league of its own. So it looks like I'll be using this for a very long time, probably until they come out with a native fish eye for the Nikon Z mirrorless system. But until then, it's going to be me and this lens. So if you want to get this lens, if you're from the Philippines, you can check out Photo Op. The link is in the description below. And I believe right now they have it for 20 to 25% less. It's on sale. So nab them while they're on sale. For the rest of the world, you can check out my Amazon affiliate link in the descriptions as well. If you intend to purchase, please use that link so I can get some support for my show. Now, if you want to see more of my work with this lens, you can check out my Instagram, Noel Guevara Photo. Now, for the next episode, it will be a review on this much-awaited baby. This is the 70-200 2.8Z lens. So I'll be taking it through the gauntlet on a wildlife shoot, bird shoot, and then a studio review. So watch out for this. This comes out next Friday, I believe. So that's it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.